The simplest kind of electronic device is made when we bring P-type silicon next to N-type silicon. Let's take a look at the PM junction, which is formed by junctioning P-type silicon with N-type silicon. And let's imagine for a second that we have P-type on one side and N-type on the other side, and that there is a point of interface, and this point of interface is abrupt, so we have an abrupt junction, and the change from P to N is sudden. Doping on the P side is at a level of NA, doping at the N side is at a level of ND. The N side is rich in electrons, and the P side is rich in holes. Now, let's try to draw the band diagram of the P side, and this is the band diagram of the P side. There is a conduction band edge and a valence band edge, and there is a Fermi level, and that Fermi level is below the mid gap. By definition, P type means that we have a Fermi level that is below the mid gap. On the end side, we have a conduction band edge and a valence band edge, and the Fermi level that is above the Fermi level, above the mid band, the, the middle of the band gap. Now, when we look at this band diagram, this is not a band diagram for a junction at thermal equilibrium. So this is actually not at thermal equilibrium. This is at non-thermal equilibrium. How do I know that? I know it because the Fermi level is not constant throughout the device. In fact, we see two Fermi levels, one on the P side and then one on the N side. And between them, there is an abrupt jump in the Fermi level. This cannot be a device at thermal equilibrium. We want to look at the PN junction at first at thermal equilibrium, which means simply in a steady state without any connected voltage source. So we, we are looking at the PN junction with a short circuit or an open circuit with no externally applied field. This cannot be the band diagram. In fact, this is a special kind of band diagram called the flat band diagram, because as you can see, all the energy levels are flat. So the flat band diagram can be thought of as the band diagram that happens when we first bring the P-type and the N-type in contact with each other. But it is not the steady state of equilibrium. Why? Because if you look at the PN junction in this situation, there will definitely be a lot of diffusion current flowing across the interface because the N side is very rich in electrons and the P side is very rich in holes. So we can see clearly that there will be a diffusion of holes from the P side to the N side and there will be a diffusion of electrons from the N side to the P side. So question, does this mean that diffusion will keep happening until we have a uniform piece of silicon from the beginning to the end of the PN junction, one that is neither strongly P nor strongly N, but is just, you know, one or the other, depending on the differential doping on the two sides. This is, after all, what we talked about when we talked about diffusion. Diffusion doesn't stop until we have a uniform distribution throughout the whole device. No, this is not actually the steady state that we will reach, because as diffusion happens, there's, a, there's something very interesting that occurs at the interface. Everything interesting about the PN junction occurs at the interface or around the interface. So on the P side, what happens is holes start to diffuse towards the N side. So we see a hole diffusion and a hole diffusion current flowing from the P side to the N side. So we can say that there is a hole diffusion current flowing in this direction. There is also a flow of electrons from the N side to the P side, and we will draw it as a dotted line to indicate that it is just a flow of electrons, not a current. The current that results from it is going to be in the opposite direction, and we can say that this is IN diffusion. So the assumption that this diffusion will continue until we see uniform distribution across the entire device is built upon an, a wrong assumption. Because remember that both the P side and the N side are originally electrically uh, neutral, meaning that they originally contain no net charge. 
So as holes diffuse from the P side towards the N side, they leave behind an area with a net charge. Recall that in P-type silicon, the main charge carriers are holes and negative acceptor ions. In general, char charge neutrality says that holes and donor ions are equal to electrons and acceptor ions. But in P-type, electrons and donors are negligible and holes and acceptors are dominant. And so each hole that leaves the P-side and goes to the N-side leaves behind a negative acceptor ion. And so as holes diffuse, they leave behind a region which has negative acceptor ions. And as electrons diffuse from the N-side to the P-side, they leave behind re a region with positive donor ions because ND plus is equal to N. The more holes diffuse, the, the, the wider the region with the ions, and the more electrons diffuse to the other side, the more, the wider the region with only donor ions left. What do we call these regions? We call them depletion regions. And depletion regions are extremely important, and it's very important to understand what they are. They are called depletion regions, and they are also called space charge regions. And the two terms are very descriptive, actually, of what's happening in these regions. They are called depletion regions because they are depleted of their main charge carriers, meaning that they no longer have charge carriers. In N-type, the majority of our charge carriers are electrons. In fact, we have a negligible amount of holes. If you take away the electrons and leave just the ions, then we have depleted this region of charge carriers. So depletion is indicative of the fact that depletion regions have very low conductivity. In fact, we can generally think of them as insulating. When we talk about depletion regions for the bipolar junction transistor and the MOSFET, we will understand that they are not insulators, but they have insulating properties. They are also space charge regions because they are no longer electrically neutral. They now carry a net charge because holes have left them and have left behind negative ions or electrons have left them and left behind a positive ion. And so we call them space charge region because they have a volumetric charge. So they are charged now. Because they are charged and we have a region of positive charge and a region of negative charge, what they will build up between them is an electric field from the positive to the negative. This electric field is not imposed externally. It is not an external electric field because we are in a state of thermal equilibrium. It is a built-in field. So this is a built-in field. So this is another term that we should be aware of. It's a built-in field. And corresponding to this built-in field, there is a built-in potential between the uh, N side and the P side. Any electric field will cause drift current to flow. So the electric field is from the N side to the P side. It will co cause holes to diffuse from the N side to the P side. So it causes a drift current of holes from the N side to the P side. And it causes an electron drift current from the P side to the N side. So it causes a drift of electrons against the direction of the field. So we have uh, N drift that creates a drift current for electrons in the opposite direction, I N drift. And so now across the interface through the depletion region, we have four current components. We have a hole diffusion current, a hole drift current, an electron diffusion current, and an electron uh, drift current. So these four current components have to cancel out. The net current flowing out of the device has to be zero. And so what's going to happen when we first bring the P side and the N side together is we will have enough diffusion from the P side to the N side to build up a depletion region that is wide enough that the charge within this depletion region will build up and build up a built-in built field that is strong enough to cause a drift current that cancels out the diffusion current. 
So there is a certain width of the depletion region that is associated with steady state thermal equilibrium. The width that builds up enough built-in field to cancel out the diffusion current components through drift current components. And thus, one of the most critical if, uh, facts about the PN junction is the width of its depletion region.